But now we're getting into our fun part, our prayers for the week. These are players that you can either pick right up off the waiver wire in a lot of cases or the end of your bench, and you can feel confident playing them. Now, these might be players, depending. We will let you know how deep your starting lineup need to be to go to these guys, but we're excited. Tim, who is your prayer flyer for Week 16? I want to lean into Tajay Spears, and I know he had a bad game last week, and I know that the game against Miami was kind of out of character with how they've been using him this year, but I think that for Tennessee to kind of survive with how bad their offensive line is, they have to dump the ball off. They have to have a quick receiver, or a receiver that they can get the ball to quick, and I don't really think they have that in the passing game besides Hopkins right now, and still Hopkins may take a little bit more time to develop his route and things like that, even though it is shorter, that I think creating those situations or scenarios for Tajay to be successful in the passing game is really going to help out Levis. So I think it's almost necessary at this point. Now, I do think that the way that Seattle plays defense, they could leave opportunities underneath, but also because of how they play defense, there could be very short opportunities underneath. So he would most likely have to be breaking uh, plays open, but I think he's capable of doing that because we've seen that he's very uh, he ranks highly in explosive run rates and things of that nature and yards after contact, stuff like that. So I think that if he gets the the play that, that he should get for them to stay in this game, I think he's a top 24 back this week. And I think that it, both he and Henry can find that success if they get into the red zones because Henry will get the short yardage and Tajay can work from further out. But it's going to really depend on if they if they want to run that where they're protecting the QB through the passing game. The short passing game, excuse me. So I'm I'm leaning in the Tajay this week just because I think that he has the ceiling. We've seen it. I just want to make sure that we do get the target share that we're we're expecting where I want him to get like six, seven targets, where there have been weeks where he's gotten one, but there's also ones he's gotten five, six, seven, and we've seen some success success, but we've also seen games where if he's gotten five and six and he's gotten 30 yards off of it. So there's kind of a, a vast array of outcomes here, but I want to lean into this one because I just think that the ceiling is pretty good this week. Yeah, last week was just a disaster all around. I mean, for for the Titans, I mean, Derrick Henry had 20 touches and he had like 13 yards on 20 touches. Now, I do have Derrick Henry respectably ranked. I am at like RB12 in the week just because the three weeks prior, he actually gave good outings. They weren't from efficiency standpoint, great outings, but for fantasy, they were good outings, you know, getting around 20 plus touches in those three games prior. But if you're going to, think that they go a little bit away from Derrick Henry because of how just how terrible last week was. I mean, Tajay Spears has to be in line for a little bit more work. I mean, he had 14 targets the two weeks prior as well. So last week having one target, the game was just all over the place. And I will note as well, though, it's looking like we're going to have Ryan Tannehill as a quarterback for this upcoming week instead of Will Levis. So he's as of recording. Will Levis didn't practice yet. Ryan Tannehill has been taking the snaps in practice. So, Tim, how do you feel about Ryan Tannehill? Do you think that he is a, uh, an encouraging factor in playing Tajay Spears, or do you think that he more leans into kind of what Derrick Henry has done in the past? I think he's found success playing behind Henry in terms of the play-action game. A lot of Tennessee quarterbacks over the like, last decade have really been dependent on on play-action to, to find success or um, success that would last longer than a game. With that being said, I think Tannehill has, you know, he's always had some mobility, which is a benefit. And I think that if they get enough time for like preparation and things like that about how they would want to deal with the pressure that they're going to get, I think he can find success. I mean, I also believe that Levis likes to take shots. And I think sometimes he takes too many where I believe that they lost that game last week because he just wasn't looking to keep continue to move the ball downfield when they had opportunities to keep drives alive. And he kind of lives or dies by the deep ball. So with it potentially being Tannehill, I think they actually have a chance to keep drives alive longer as long as Tannehill can actually play quarterback, which he was injured last year. So we did see a little bit of that drop off and then he got injured again this year. So I think that the injuries play into that perception of how he plays, but him being a veteran, him having success in this offense, him the first, I think it was actually the second season that he was in this offense. He was delivering the ball in the double coverage, just like pinpoint. And it was like, a, he had turned the corner. So I don't mean, if we get 60, 70% of that, I think that this offense can be successful this week. He's playing for his career. <laughs> I mean, at this point, mm -hmm. like Ryan Tanhill needs to play conservative. He comes out here and throws three interceptions. He probably doesn't have a, a job next year, even as a backup. So uh, I think he'll be motivated to keep it in play. And I, 
I would like to think that it will help Tajay Spears. But moving into my prayer for the week, I'm going to go with Javante Williams. Now, it's not a name that typically enters the prayer category. But when you are running back 29 in the ECR, you're a prayer, baby. I mean, that's only a couple spots off of where Tajay Spears was. So I have Javante Williams at running back 21. So it's not like an absolute smash play, but I do think he's going to be top 24 for you guys, which is absolutely a starter. So New England, the middle of the pack, in terms of what they give up to running backs for fantasy. So I understand managers kind of being scared off of that in combination with what we got a week ago where he really disappointed, but I'm just going to call the horde inefficiency and unexpected game script, a one off scenario and revert my thinking back to what we saw in Javante's workload the two weeks prior, because his snap count came down for no, no reason that really stands out to me other than the game script wasn't what he had had in the weeks prior and back seeing 15 to 20 opportunities. They just don't grow on trees. So unless we're projecting a lesser snap share in back-to-back weeks, running back 29 just feels wildly conservative. If you're blessed at running back, this matchup is tough enough for me to say, sure, go elsewhere. Seeing how New England is allowed the least number of yards and the fifth fewest rushing touchdowns on average over the last six weeks to running backs. But for those looking at more sparing options, Devontae's more than volume driven enough to get it done this week. I have a few spots where I'm playing Javante as my running back too in lineups where I'm still alive and I'm totally, totally okay with it, especially if my wide receivers are looking nice. Yeah, I got Javante in a couple spots, or Javante in a couple spots too. Something I really was disappointed with was the fact they didn't even really let him get any sort of work in the red zone when they got close. And that was really confusing to me because he would get them closer and then they would take him out or so I wonder if there was something going on with potential, you know, in, in-game injury or something like that, because he was switching in and out a lot. So I think we'll see a better week this week. He did get his first rushing touchdown since like 2020, I think like a week or two ago, which is just nuts to me to think about. So I don't want to lean on any sort of like rushing or red zone work, but he does get work in the passing game, which is definitely beneficial. And he can score from further out because of that. But we'll see what what, ends, what the, you know, the box score ends up being playing a New England defense. They usually um, plans for pretty well, but really depends on who they're really going to key on. Could be that ends up being that Javante is the guy that produces all the points because they're stopping or attempting to stop Cortland Sutton or somebody else. So I think it's a good play, especially for volume. I do believe that what we saw in the, the weeks prior to the last week is truly what Javante is. And that's, you know, a top 12 running back a lot of the weeks, top 14 running back. So I would lean into it most weeks and you just don't really worry about the matchup just because he is that guy. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's quite as talented as we were hoping when he came into the league. A lot of people who are watching his film and studying him for a while loved him as a talent, like had him as an A, a plus to S tier type talent guy coming in 90th plus percentile. And I don't know if he quite has lived up to that. Now the injuries haven't helped him. I don't know if he's quite that back, but I would like to think that moving forward in next year, sorry to move this conversation past just this week, but with Javante Williams, I would like to think the way the team has trusted him, the way he has been, you know, serviceable despite being inefficient. I would like to think that one year past the injury next year, Javante Williams might have a little bit more of that spark because they've been able to trust him. He's been getting 15 to 20 touches every single game. He's been getting the receiving work. And that's more than I was actually expecting coming into the season. I would like to think that a year past the injury, we might see a little bit more of that because he is just missing that him only having one rushing touchdown since 2020 just doesn't really fit the mold of the kind of player that I thought he was.